I promised you last week that what we're going to do this time was look at how we can do some unit testing with our pre-rendered Blazor application. But I realized actually I was doing things slightly out of order because there's a problem with what we've got at the moment that really makes testing quite difficult. If you just take a look at the code, we can see that in our home page, we're making these calls to HTTP client. And although we've wrapped them up in this persister, which means we don't get it called from both the server and the client unnecessarily, it does mean there's a couple of problems. One is, as I mentioned, that HTTP client is actually very difficult to mock when you're doing unit testing. Obviously, that's something you want to do. It is possible to do it, but it's really quite tricky. There's no simple virtual methods that you can override in your mock. The other problem we've got here is this code gets called both on the client and the server, as we saw. And when it's called on the server, the issue is we're making an HTTP call back to the very same server. So the API and the server are on the same process. So what we're going to do in this video is abstract that out for the two reasons, one of making things easier to test, which we'll see in the next video, but also for the small but important performance gain of not making an HTTP request on yourself. So let's look at how we're going to do that. And the first thing we're going to do, as you'd imagine, is we're going to add another service and we're going to start that with an interface. So all we'll do in here is add a new class, we'll switch that to an interface, and we're going to call this simply iAPI service. And all we need to put in there is the ability to get hold of the two API resources that we have. So we're going to have a task returning an i enumerable of books, which remember that's one of the data types, and we're going to say get book. I'm not going to bother with async. I think we can take that as read nowadays. And we'll do a similar one for authors and call that get authors. And one of the extra thing we've got to do in there, those have to be nullable because these calls, it's going to be possible for those not to come back. So there's our interface, simple enough. Obviously, we could have other methods in there like getting a single book or posting or whatever, but we'll just keep it simple to show the principles there. Next thing we need to do is do an implementation of that. So we'll do an add and this time add a class, simply call it API service, and then implement the interface, which it guesses for us, fill in the methods, and there we've got those. Now we're gonna be making use of an HTTP client here, so the first thing we've gotta do is get that injected into our service. So we'll have a private read-only, and then it's guessed for us, which is very nice, and then we just hook that up through the constructor. So something that you're going to do very frequently when you're doing this sort of programming, and you can see that the IntelliSense and the AI is really helpful with that. Always check that it's doing the right thing, but it certainly was there. And then in our get authors and our get books, we can actually take the code that we've got here. So what we basically want is that await all the way through to there. So we'll copy that and then pop that into books. So here we'd say return and then all of that. Change that obviously to the underscore HTTP client. And then because we've got an await, we need to change this to async. And we also need to get hold of another using directive because we just need that extension method. So that's the way you typically do that. Worth pointing out actually, as a general point, we don't really need to do it in quite such a complex way. We know about pairing up async and await, but remember the point of await is that we hit this point, we go off and do the request, and we jump out of the function at line 22 and let the rest of the system do anything. And then when the books come back, we pick up at line 22 and carry on. But in this case, there is nothing after line 22. And so that's a bit unnecessary. Notice what is being returned as a task. And if you've only got to return one thing, which is going to be the task anyway, then actually you can miss off the async and miss off the await and simply return the task we're getting back from get from JSON async. It will simplify your code a fair bit and make it a bit easier to read. And also saves on all that code that the keyword async causes to be generated for the state machine to make all of that work. So it's quite a useful thing to do. And we'll do a similar sort of thing on the get authors. So we'll go and grab just from there, in fact. And then in this case, we can just do the same sort of thing. So return and then underscore HTTP client, and then paste in all of that. And so that is the two of those done. Now let's go back to the component. And instead of injecting HTTP client, we're going to inject our I API service. And we'll just call that API service. And then down here, we can just call that. So let's get rid of all of that. 
and then just say API service dot get books. And for precisely the reason I was talking about, we also don't need the async on there because we're just returning that. And then similarly on this one, we can say API service dot get authors and get rid of the async there. And so we can see that's all nice and happy. And so that should be that working, but we've only provided the implementation of the IAPI service for the client side of it. That on the browser is where we want to actually make the HTTP requests. Let's just do the last thing there and configure that in program.cs, but remember we're doing this in the program CS for the client. And so you can see if we're looking here, as well as that persistent service that we we're looking at last time, we've already got the injection of the HTTP client. But what we want to do is inject that HTTP client into our API service. And although we could just do it with that straightforward injection there, in fact, a better way to do it is we can do it like this. We can say builder.services, and then we do dot add HTTP client. And then again, you can see as it's working out for us, we then give it the typical specification you'd have of the interface IAPI service to the implementation of API service. So we're saying add an HTTP client for this particular service that we're configuring here. And then we can see, and let's just let it fill that in. I'll put in a carriage return so it can be seen a bit more clearly, but it's setting it up with a client that goes to the appropriate base address. So that line 11 is really just the same as we can see at line eight, but that's what's setting all of that up. So that now means that for the API service, we'll get that particular instance of the HTTP client, but we could have other services with other instances, because if you had multiple APIs, you'd need to be going to different URLs for them. So that will get everything working on the browser, but we haven't got everything working on the server yet, because if we tried to do that, we've got no configuration on the server for the API service, so we'll just get the fact it's not found. So we need to put in a separate implementation for how we do the work on the server. And that means we've got to put in a different place. We don't want to put it in here in the client because then it'd be available in the client and the server. So in the server, we're going to add a folder called services. And in there, we'll add our other implementation of that IAPI service interface. So we'll add a class in here. And I'm going to call this one local data service, but it's still going to implement IAPI service. But in this case, it's just going to return the raw data. So if we look at the actual API that we've got here, we've got the minimal API with those. So all we're going to do is return dummy data.books and dummy data.authors. But the way we're going to do that, because it's returning a task, so we've got to say return task dot from result and then dummy data, get the namespace for, and in this case dot authors. You get a slight problem in that it can't do an implicit conversion here between what we've got there as a list of authors and what we're returning as a nullable i number of authors. So actually, you've got to in some way put that in there. And so we can just use that with a generic. So here, we can just make sure that's an i enumerable for author and make that nullable. And then we'll just copy that code and do the same thing in here, except obviously we're doing with books here. And so that's what we've got there. So that's set up that up on the server side. And let's then do a couple of things, actually. One is, if we go back to the program, just to save duplication, even though it's pretty trivial duplication here, but if this were real data that we were getting from a database or whatever, it would be more complicated. So here, actually, let's inject the IAPI service data source. And then here we'll return data source dot get books and similar sort of thing on the second one. So make that data source dot get authors. And then finally, we need to do the configuration in here. So let's go up here. We shouldn't now need to have an HTTP client. Weird thing to have on the server anyway, so we can get rid of that. And so on here, we can simply do a builder dot services. And now you can see the IntelliSense is getting it wrong because we don't want an HTTP client. We just want to do an add scoped of IAPI service onto the local data service, which we just need to get hold of the namespace for. So that should now be everything working. And so we can see that if we run that up and drag it over, 
then you can see it's all working fine. Once again, let's do a reload and you can just see those details buttons take a moment to come in, but we're not getting any of the flickering. Also, we can see if we navigate away and come back, we're straight in there, that's all working. But the key difference we should have, which we can see by putting some breakpoints in there, is if we go to one of the endpoints, let's just say go to books. So if I do a reload, then we shouldn't ever be hitting that. So if I do a reload there, you can see we didn't hit that. What we did hit was getting the dummy data. So again, if we put a break in there on the get books, we'll see that it does hit that one. But the only time it's ever going to hit the API endpoint is if we're working entirely within the Blazor application. So if I go away to other and then go back to home, then it does have to make a request back to the endpoint. And so that's why we're seeing that working. So a little bit of restructuring there, but quite an important step to take. As I say, it's going to make life easier for us in the next video when we're introducing testing. But as a general rule, it is a bad idea to have direct calls to an HTTP client in a Blazor component or anything like that. For the two reasons we've seen, one is it means it's harder to change the implementation. So we were forced to make the HTTP call even when we're on the server and it wasn't necessary and also they're difficult for testing. So having made those changes, we can now, in the next video, as I promised before, get on to the idea of unit testing. So if you enjoyed that, do click like, do subscribe, and I'll see you for that next video.